What you're about to see is an extended version of me building this house in SketchUp, me drawing it in SketchUp. Uh, it is long, it is kind of boring. It is the kind of thing that you should watch if you really want to see exactly how I did it in SketchUp. And I think that's a really valuable tool for those of you that are looking to design your own house in 3D modeling software like SketchUp. So uh, continue watching if that's what you're looking to do. If you just want to see an overview of the house, uh, of me doing it in SketchUp and just kind of a tour of how I did it, um, just and then move right on to the framing videos and seeing how I actually built it in real life, uh, then you should click here or there or somewhere uh, right now to watch the SketchUp overview video, which is it's about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and it just goes through the finished product. So uh, enjoy, guys, and I hope this is helpful. Hey, guys, so I'm going to get started on the framing uh, now. I'm going to get started on some wall framing off that subfloor that we completed in the last video. Padam. Um, so let's do this. Let's first, uh, I want to, we were looking at it like this before in this orientation, but... <clears throat> With the way the axes, axes are, I, I want to look at it like this. I want to look at it from this angle. So uh, what I'd like to do, this, this house is in the way right now, so I'm going to do a quick little, um, I'll show you guys a little select when you're on the select tool, space bar. Uh, if you do a uh, left click selection uh, from uh, right to left, it will select anything. <clears throat> anything any group or anything that you're partially touching so you see that I I selected from here to about there and it selected everything however if I do the same thing a left click select on the right it's a solid line as opposed to dotted line for the uh, the right to left and it will only select everything that I have selected fully um, that's why I didn't select everything so let's just do a quick uh, select all right there and we're gonna move this and I'm going to keep it on that red axis, which is a uh, right arrow. I'm going to move it way, you know, maybe not way out there, but over there. <coughs> you know what? I'm going to move it further out. I don't want to see that thing in the background, really. You know, I'm going to move it behind. No, I'm just going to move it way out. You know, maybe that's not a good idea. I need to, I'm need i probably going to need to look at that thing in references. So we'll just leave it right there for now. Okay, so let's get started. <coughs> So the idea here is that I want to construct the uh, the walls in sections. Um, let's just take a look at this guy real quick. If we look at this, you can see that uh, I have all these layers down here. Let me uh, minimize a couple things. I don't need all this stuff. We got all these layers of walls, right? So if I start undoing layers, <coughs> excuse me. Start so doing layers. You start. I start disappearing these walls. And the idea behind this is, I'm going to build these walls separately. And they're small enough to manage. I can manage them myself, maybe with a, another helping hand. Um, and then I can build them all on the ground using these SketchUp drawings as my plans. And then I can raise them all with probably one other person in a single day. Uh, so that's the idea, and that's why I have them all in separate layers, so they can be hidden individually, uh, so I can just, you know, look at, a, isolate a single wall and get the dimensions and then build it. So that's the idea behind that. Um, over here, we're not going to be getting started with layers right away. Um, the key to doing this is that, you know, if you open up a new, uh, a new SketchUp file, you're just going to have layer zero and that's what you want to create all your objects in. So let's start by um, by taking a look at how I divvied up these walls uh, size-wise. Uh, let's see here. So this wall over here <coughs> zoom in further. can't snap to that. Okay, so I did nine foot two and a half this wall is nine foot two and a half, and this wall is nine foot seven. 
So it does, they don't have to be exact. It just has to be a logical break. Like you see, I have the door here. Um, it had to be. It had to be. It had to make sense where I broke the wall. Um, so that's actually an interesting point that I should probably look at before anything else. And that is where this door is going to go. So actually, let's let's grab this whole thing real quick. Before I do anything, I need to make sure this is going to go in the right location. Okay, so let's grab from this. This point right here. And let's put that house. Let's just plop that house right on the trailer. Okay, so <clears throat> right out of the gate. Oh, <laughs> you know what? This is on the wrong way. I gotta rotate this house. This is not the orientation it's gonna be in. Okay, so Q to rotate. Can I get a midpoint here? Do I have a... I know there's a thing with move. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, there, there's probably a way to move, to rotate this like perfectly in the place that it's in. But I'm not going to really worry about that right now. Oh, did I just get it? Yeah, I was close. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you just click... Uh, you get your, basically, I want to get the blue axis. I can probably lock that by hitting plus... Yeah, and then if I got like the midpoint, the center, the very center of this whole subfloor, I probably could have spun it in place. So you basically just click where you where you want it to spin from, and then go out to like show the direction off another point that you want it to spin around, or that's where it spins. Yeah, something like that. Uh, we'll get to that more later when it comes up. But for now, let's just snap this right back over there. Okay, so you know before I had an issue with the layout. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this is amazing. Justine, look at this. This is amazing. That door, that door fits now. That's freaking awesome. So before, when the fenders were uh, nine feet long, they protruded into the uh, where we wanted the door. And now, we got a fit. So this is amazing. Very happy. Um, the fenders now aren't going to affect any of the framed openings. take a look over here yeah we got a window here and a window here not affecting anything <clears throat> with the framed openings and inside if we just take a little peeksy this we're gonna have like cabinetry and uh, and storage and stuff where where you're seeing those wheel wells so that is not going to be a problem very good this is very exciting very happy that the uh, so th we uh, the 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 where did the trailer go? <laughs> what happened? Oh, well, obviously the trailer was right there the whole time. I <laughs> just put it on the trailer. It's funny. Okay. okay, I'm just undoing that. Yeah, so we were originally we were really concerned. Oh, I should flip this around. I should redo. Okay, and now, ooh, now I got a problem, because I lost my selection. All right, whatever, we'll just keep this out of here. Yeah, so before, um, we had thought that the uh, we weren't going to be able to avoid the uh, the wheel wells interfering with our door, and we're going to have to redesign the inside space. And now that we actually are talking to the... To the uh, <clears throat> the actual manufacturer of the trailer um, instead of just uh, like the salesman or the uh, the distributor or the vendor or whatever you want to call them uh, tiny house basics we're getting the exact dimensions of how this particular fabrication shop is going to make it and the dimensions that they're making it happen to work with our our previous uh, layout and dimensions and that's excellent news for us <coughs> okay so Let's get started. So, what we need to do, let's start with this back wall. So let's let's first rotate this again. Select the entire thing, and we're going to we're going to lock to the blue axis, and let's see if I can find that center point. I don't know. It's gonna happen. I don't know if I can find it. I can 
probably find it over here. Can I just find it? Yeah. So here it is. Midpoint and group. Let me zoom out a little bit. I can zoom in over here. And then let's click there. And now we can rotate the whole thing 180. I'm typing in 180. <clears throat> and now we've taken the whole thing around 180. So now we're looking at the side that is we're referencing off the right side here. So, um, we have approximately, I don't know, 9 foot 2, 9 foot 3 walls. Um, let's see, let's see if it makes sense. Oh, yeah, what we want to do, let's just do this. Let's, let's pull this dimension off, because what we want to do is line up our walls. This door is going to define where this wall has to end here, so... This wall ends right there, so let's see. What's the... Nine foot... <clears throat> yeah. Nine foot five and a half. Yeah, but I, think, I think we did this one a little bit differently. Yeah, see the sheathing? That was including the sheathing there. Oh, right. We do want to include the sheathing in that. <coughs> oh, no. The length doesn't matter. Okay. So, yeah, let's just say, uh, let's make it slightly bigger. Let's say 9 foot 5, 9 foot 6. Let's just say 9 foot 6. That will be good enough. Okay, so we're going to go with 9 foot 6 for this first wall section. <coughs> Basically just going to split this length, this 28 feet, up into approximate threes and have it like line up with some type of logical delineation. So let's start by drawing a 2x4. A so there's a few ways you can do this. Uh, <coughs> the way that I'm going to show you first is drawing a 2x4 on the ground here. So so we're on the... We don't want to be on the blue axis. We want to be on the red axis. Oh no. My bad. Yes, we do want to be on the blue axis. Um, and you'll see why. <coughs> that means when we pull it, it's going to go upward. So we're basically drawing it in 2D right now. And we're going to be at... Uh, what is this? 3.5. 3.5 inches. I'm typing in. Uh, 3.5 comma 96. Let's just start with that as a baseline. Okay, so now we have Okay, so now we have our uh, <coughs> our shape. Now we're going to pull up um, by uh, 1.5. Because 2 by 4s are 1.5 inches thick. Now, here's a weird little thing. It looks like... Someone told me... <coughs> a guy that was helping me on a SketchUp forum told me that... <coughs> something about reverse faces. Like, if you have reverse faces, you've got a dark side on top. And I see this as being a dark side, but I think that's just lighting. So when I rotate up, it turns white. I think he was talking about like inside out more. Like if I was to zoom in inside this face. Yeah, okay, you see in here? We have everything is a darker shade of gray. So I think that's what he meant. It was like there's this thing where you can possibly get like inside faces on the outside and it's called a reverse face or something like that. And that's not what you want. I think we're okay here. All right, so we got this. Uh, let's just confirm our dimensions. We got we should have three and a half over this way. We do should have one and a half this way, and we do. And honestly, the length is arbitrary because we're going to be modifying that in a moment. Um, <clears throat> but it's not arbitrary because we had just talked about doing it as nine foot six. Um, nine foot six works fine. I can get the other thing you want to keep in mind is you, I wouldn't want to do like nine foot, uh, you know, nine foot two inches for a length, or sorry, eight foot two inches because. Then, if you do that, you're two inches 
beyond a two by eight, a two by four by eight. So I don't want to create a lot of waste here. So by doing nine foot six on this length, um, I can get a two by ten and cut off six inches, and it's not that big of a deal. So always kind of trying to keep that type of efficiency in mind. Um, all right, I'm going to select all the entities by triple clicking. I think it's triple clicking. Yeah, it's triple clicking on this object I just created, and we're going to make that a component. Dow. And now we're going to move it and we're going to snap it right to the corner right there. Um, yes, I think that's what I want to do. Let's just double check over here. Yes, that's definitely what I want to do. <coughs> okay. So, let's see. Now that that's done, um, I want to check my heights too, because I already have a lot of stuff figured out from this previous drawing. Um, let me just get my height here. Tape measure. I want to get my height of these, of these two buys. Back to tape measure. Okay, six foot three and a quarter. This is very important, and I'm going to... Once I get into the framing, I'm going to stop and kind of explain to you why we chose a lot of the dimensions that we did. Uh, but for right now, I totally forgot what I was just measuring. Six foot something and a quarter. Six foot and three quarters. Okay. So let's go back. Let's, so now what we can do, what I like to do is now use the pencil tool sometimes. Um, and I am going to draw. Boom. Boom. I'm going to type in 1.5 here for 1.5 inches. I'm going to make sure I'm on the red axis. And I'm going to close my new shape here. And now look, I have a new, I have a new, uh, a new plane, a new uh, face rather, that I can pull. All right. So six foot and space three forward slash four. Boom. <coughs> I've just now created a vertical frame member of the size that it needs to be. Um, so I'm going to triple click on this guy and say make component. Now here's a pretty cool thing that we can do here. So you see on this, uh, <clears throat> I decided to start my, I believe I started all my all my uh, 16 on center dimensions from this end. It looks like I did. Um, and if we look over here, Yeah, I got it. Let's do this. Let's just start on this side. I'm going to move it over. And I'm going to get on the green axis. And I'm going to move it till it snaps right there. OK. <clears throat> now, here, I'm going to divulge a little bit more about that big problem, why I'm, uh, why I'm redrawing this entire thing. You want to make absolutely freaking sure that all of your all of your uh, exterior edges of framing members are lining up exactly with each other right here. And the reason for that is if if you don't do that on a face that you want to do ex uh, you want to do sheathing on. Like ultimately, I'm going to put the sheathing right on this on this surface, on this face of the, uh, the exterior of the framing. If they didn't, if they don't line up properly, I will never be able to properly sheathe the house. Um, when I get to sheathing, I'm going to explain that a little bit more. But I want you to be very cautious about you know snapping, and that's why I'm like using the arrow keys to go specifically right along cer certain axes, because. I can't take the risk of something be out of whack. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to be extra cautious. And I feel like I should almost, before I even go too far, I should like kind of sheathe it as I go. Um, so actually, that's what I'll do. I'm going to get a couple wall sections done, and I'll start sheathing them and show you what I'm talking about. I think that'll work out good. All right, so here's a nice little easy way to deal with this. So we got our component, vertical 2x4 right here. <clears throat> um, let's also just take our bottom component now and we will copy 
control and move this up. We will hit up to stay on the blue axis. And we're going to go up, 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 up to the top of this. And we're going to snap right to here, endpoint and component. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to take this guy. <coughs> and we're going to let's move over. Going to move, control, stay on the left arrow, and type in 16. That's uh, so what we're doing here is we're creating our studs 16 on center. And obviously for this last one, <coughs> we're not going to go 16, but we'll select the other edge on the other side here. And we're going to snap right to the edge right there. Let's take a little look-see. Okay, looking good. So just uh, triple confirming everything. I'm probably not going to do this forever. It's a little bit overkill, but if I go from... Let me just actually get the midpoint. We'll go from center to center. And it says zero. That's not what I want. Let me go from an endpoint. And I go from edge to edge, and I get one foot four, 16 inches. So we're good. Except for this last one, of course, which is one foot two and a half because we reached the end of that guy. <coughs> okay. So, right. So I've already made a mistake. Um, oh no, I didn't. This is all good. So it's just a quick little reminder of a uh, component. This is also a reminder for me. I like to see it because I never really used components before. Um, if I edit this component, the component that uh, that I copied from, copied off of, they are still the same component. I haven't made them unique, so they both move. Um, and the same thing would go for all of these uh, these vertical guys. If I modify those, oops, this thing is not cooperating. I don't know, I'm like not looking at it right or something. Hang on a second. Yeah, so you can see how they all, oops. Nah. We all move together. You can see what's happening there. <coughs> if I want to modify just one of these, I have to make that one unique before I do it. Okay, there's one wall. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep going down the line, and I'm going to make this whole wall like this. Um, so let's do this. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to make this a component right now, so I'm going to make it a group. I'm just going to... I'm going to alt... No, I'm going to control click all these different components that I have here. And I'm going to copy off of this point right here. Stay on that green axis, lock to it. Orbit around a little bit, and there we go. <coughs> so I got another wall now. Uh, but this isn't going to work as I can see very clearly here. So what I need to do, um, I need to make a logical break before I hit this fender. Because <coughs> I need to have a header that goes over this entire fender. So a couple things need to happen here. I need to delete this component. And it looks like I'm going to need just to... There's like an optical illusion going on there. Okay. Um, it looks like what I can do is like this. I'll move it. Okay, now I'm going to move this. Let me move it over. Okay, so now I'm going to move it, but I'm going to go down to here. So it, <coughs> inference, it snaps to the edge of that framing member down there. Okay, and now I'm going to. Now I'm going to about to modify. I'm about to modify this guy right here. Now, the problem that I'm going to have, I have to make that unique, because if I modify that guy, it's going to modify this guy. <coughs> and it's also going to modify this guy. And it's also going to modify this guy, too. 
So I'm going to make it unique first. I'll make these both unique, actually, the one up here as well. You know what I'll do? Actually, I'll just delete the one up here. And I'll make this one unique. I'll select that face, and then I'm going to push it. And I'm going to snap right to the edge of that. <coughs> okay. I got another problem. This guy somehow got pushed low. Not sure how that happened. I must have made a little error before, so I'm just going to move that up. I'm going to snap that to blue axis. Okay. And now what I can do is take this guy and copy him. I'm going to go off the bottom edge because that will allow me <coughs> small up to lock on the blue axis and that will allow me to snap right to my visible edge on this vertical 2x4. Okay. So already I, I realized that with these fenders I had to make a pretty substantial change like right out of the gate um, than what I had before because <coughs> um, I don't want to have like partial framing over the fender I don't think. But hey, this is me uh, as a discovery process. This is figuring it out. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to work this out with you guys step by step. All right, so how do I want to do this now? Um, the fender, I actually will need to bring this wall back a little further because the header for, we need a, a king stud and a cripple stud, <coughs> or a jack stud rather, underneath this header to support it. Um, so we would need to push this wall out to make a new wall that's specifically just dealt with that. Dealt with that header. So let's see let's see if that makes sense. Let's make see if that makes sense to do. So <coughs> we're gonna have to move all this stuff over by three inches. Let's give that a try. Okay, we'll push these guys in. Inches. Do the same up here. Ah, that was part of the beauty of that, guys. I didn't have to actually push this guy in up here because he moved when I moved this one. Okay, so we're good there. All right, so let's. Uh, I don't know if I'm liking this. I don't know if I'm liking the way this works way this thing is right now. Uh, but you know what? It's probably not bad. Let's give it a try. Alright, so we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna copy him over here, and then we will orbit back around hide this. We can push this all the way. Literally right to there, it's fine. And now we can unhide. <coughs> That's weird. What just happened? Oh, because I was selected inside of that component. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, I know why. Because this is a uh, this is a component. I have to make this thing unique first. Okay, make unique. Push this thing all the way over here. Okay, now we can unhide all. Okay, so we got that back. Pull this over here like that. All right. So now I need to copy this. Make two copies of this. <coughs> okay, so we need to figure out how tall this needs to be. 
So can we... How do we do that? On the silly curve. Okay, I'm not sure how. So let's probably do this the... The, the way... The layman way. Push this out. <coughs> We're just doing this to make like, so I can see what the heck's going on. I'm not sure how to do this with a. Uh, this is gonna go out like this. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do this with the tape measure, so that's why I'm doing it this way. Doesn't seem to be working out too great, but it doesn't really matter. The point is now I know what <coughs> what height that needs to be at, so I can take this thing. I can take this uh, this jack stud and push it down. Whoops, these are components. So I need to make this unique first. Then I can take this jack stud and push it down. too far. On outside edge active. Okay. <coughs> so that takes care of that. I can get rid of this thing now. Alright, so now <coughs> I can take these two Maybe even these three. Let's try that. And we will move them. Copy. Lock to the to the green axis and put them right there. Okay, now we're gonna rotate them. <coughs> See this is the thing I keep wondering how to do. How do I rotate? So that's a midpoint. Can I, will that work? If I orbit and do the midpoint from this side. Oh boy, yeah, I did the wrong thing. <coughs> All right, let's lock this to the blue axis. So we're gonna, we're gonna start our blue axis rotate from the midpoint of there. Can I hit it? I can't. Q again to the midpoint of there. No, see that doesn't do what I want it to do. I'd have to select the uh, the midpoint, like underneath or something. Okay, so let's do this. Be on the red axis. <coughs> Get back to the edge here. Okay, duplicated that on that side. All right, so now what I need, <coughs> I'm going to draw this because I don't have like a good object to use this with right now. So I'm just going to say that. I'm going to say 1.5 on the red axis, and then go up 3.5 on the blue axis, and then come across to snap on the edge on the red axis again. And then come back down. And now I have a new face to pull right above that fender. Can pull that fender all the way <coughs> till I snap on on edging component. All right. And now I'm going to 
make this guy a component. <coughs> and I'm thinking this should probably be 2x6. This is a long span. This is like nearly 9 feet. So this, right now it's a 2x4. So let's pull this up. Uh, 2 by 4 is 3 and a half, 2 by 6 is 5 and a quarter, so we need 1 and 3 quarters additional pull up. 1.75. Good. Move, copy. Take this to this corner over here. Let's lock this on the red axis. Okay. Okay, there it is. <coughs> So this header, I'm not going to draw it, but this header will have some uh, blocking of uh, half-inch plywood in between those two 2x6s. Two and there we go. <coughs> I don't know, in the real world, maybe I'll choose to, uh, to not be actually touching this fender. It's probably a good idea in case any moisture gets in there. In fact, why don't I just move this up like half an inch? I'm not really psyched on the fact that it's like touching this fender. So we're just going to move this up 0.5. And then check this out. See, these are components now. I want to show you this. Watch this. I can't really see that, but oh boy, it's hard to see. Yeah, I'm going to have to zoom in, but I'll show you in a second. So if I push this up, snap there, notice that the same thing was done here. This is <coughs> part of why it's helpful with, to use components. Okay, so there's my header. Now I can do my frame members above this. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if this is good or not. I mean, it doesn't feel good. I don't like the fact that I have just this little like three inch block on the for the sole plate there for this piece um, my goal of all of this is to is to keep these uh, wall sections as small as possible but this seems a little silly so maybe what I'm gonna do <coughs> is extend this wall maybe this this wall will extend a little bit beyond to here and it'll extend all the way to here. Um, I think that would probably be wise. It is the first floor wall. It's not like we got to lift it up high in the air. So I think that's what I should do. All right. So that being said, let's do this. Oops. Let's hide this little guy. Push this back. Kind of push it back to that. That guy right there. Yep. Looks good to me. Okay, and now we're going to create a new one. We will copy you. Put you right there. Hide this guy. And we're going to push this. Uh, I don't even know where that's supposed to stop. So we'll just do it there. Exit editing that component. <coughs> and we're going to unhide last. Oh, I keep doing this. I need to make that component unique. It's killing me. All right, this component, make unique. And now we're going to hide this guy. Push. Get out from editing that component. We're going to unhide last. There we go. <coughs> OK, now we're going to push. We're going to actually pull this one. See, I never understand, why can't I select a point there? I do not know why it doesn't work. But it still is connecting. It has something to do with the inference engine. 
and it's a little finicky, I think. Okay, so now we can move this stud. Keep it left arrow. Snap. Okay. There we go. And now... <coughs> we're going to make this all one big wall, so we're going to push this. Oh, see, that time I was able to snap to that edge, that corner. I don't really understand. Okay, and bingo, bingo. That is one long thing now. We will take this. Alright, so here's here's a little little funny thing here. So what we need to do is we got these guys over here at 16 on center. So we need to continue that. So let me let me first take one of these guys. And I'm gonna move, copy, and go a 16. And this time I'm gonna do a couple of them. Maybe even three. I think we can fit three. No, three is too much. But we're gonna do 48. <coughs> Get rid of that last one. Okay. So that has continued our 16 on center pattern from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We got nine of these guys. <coughs> 16 on center, and the end right here is not. <coughs> and the end over here is not. Um, so, but we have a wall break right here. So I don't, I need, I need a better connection point. I need my walls to be squared up. I want them to be solid monolithic objects before I start putting them up uh, on the trailer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double up on the 2x4s right over here. So what are we? We're going to be minus an inch and a half. So we should have, uh, what is it? 11? No, no. 16. <coughs> we should have 14 and a half inches between these two. Yeah, 14 and a half inches. That's going to be a common occurrence <coughs> at these uh, at these points where the walls meet each other, because um, I want them to be solid units um, when I build them on the ground, and that's the only way to do that. Um, it's a little bit of a waste of lumber, I guess. If I had built all the framing in place <coughs> um, on the trailer instead of doing them in separate sections, then raising them individually then I could avoid things like this. But that's not how I'm going to do it. So let's take this guy, copy him over. We're going to have to make you unique, that's for sure. All right, get you on the right axis. Hit Control to copy, and we can now snap you right next to your friend right there. We're going to have to make you unique because I'm about to make you longer. Oops, I just hid you. Make unique. And now... We're going to pull you all the way to there. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Next. Uh, let's do this. Let's take, uh, so we have 16 on center here, here, and here. Let's continue our 16 on center. So we will copy, drag this up here. Let's actually first just go 16, so we know where that is. And that will move up on the blue axis. And we will snap to right there. Okay, and now we're going to have to make you unique. I actually remembered. And we're going to push. We're going to snap you to the outside edge of that top plate. <coughs> okay, so it's, yeah, it's looking a little bit weird here, but the thing is that we got 16 on center, 16 on center, 16 on center, 16 on center. And then this king stud right here and this little jack stud, they're just going to be in the middle of that 16 on center pattern. That's just the way it's going to be. Um, the 16 on center is really important for, uh, for sheathing nailing. 
uh, for knowing where your studs are in your walls when you're hanging stuff or doing something inside you got to maintain that pattern across the length of your uh, of your house so let's start moving these guys over lock you in onto the green axis move you over 16 we got two of these guys to work with now control click select both of them now we can move lock control left arrow to lock into the green access and we'll move you by 32 and we'll do the same thing again I'll actually select one more of you and now we're going to move you by 48 I'll lock you into the back axis 48 <coughs> okay so now what we should expect is uh, from here to You know what? Actually, we might have a problem with how these 2x4s are lining up. Let's see where we're at. It's 14. Oh no, it's perfect. What am I talking about? Okay, so we're good. Uh, we, got, we got one foot. We got 16 inches uh, over to our third wall section. Um, so we're continuing our pattern across the remainder of the uh, of the wall of the uh, of the wall of the house here. Now keep in mind that we got 16 on center starting from here now we got it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 uh, 12 13 14 15 16 16 is that one 17 18 19 20 21 22. Number 22 is, is uh, if you remember correctly, it's 14 and a half, while the rest have a pattern of 16 inches. <coughs> so yeah, that's our, uh, don't forget to save, guys. You do not want to lose what you're doing. Big pain in the butt. So that is our basic, yep, I do have that gap there. So that is our basic, uh, a basic frame wall, um, with a header going over that, uh, going over that wheel well. Uh, so what I can do, right out of the gate, I can duplicate this. Um, I can take this entire thing. I'm going to click from the right to the left so I can select all of those. And then I can simply select this one, this one, this one. Oh, it looks like these aren't selected either. <coughs> yeah, because I don't want to select that trailer. <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to <coughs> I'm have to hide that trailer later. Be able to hide that trailer, but for now, this is fine. Um, I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna lock into the red axis, and I'm gonna snap right there. And now, oops, this is what I was talking about, that house getting in the way. Oop, looks like I forgot to select a couple things. Let's try this again. So there we have our. <coughs> so there we have uh, basic frame walls for the for uh, the two long, uh, two long sides of the house here. Um, obviously, I don't have any framed openings in there yet. Um, all those dimensions are very specific, and I have to 
measure everything out from here and transfer that back over to here. Um, but uh, I guess I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna get started on that and get that done on the first floor right now, and uh, and then move on. Framed openings. That's what we're gonna be working on now. Um, so let's uh, start on. So uh, let's start on what I'm calling here the south wall. Uh, this wall on this side of the trailer um, is going to be the south wall, um, at least in our initial orientation, uh, which might have changed, but I'm going to keep calling it that for now. And uh, this will be our north wall. Um, holy shit. Tam okay, so let me first take a little look here. We got two foot, this has got to be a two foot by two foot rough opening window, and we are three foot two and a quarter high with those vertical studs. Let's also see how far in we are. So, from the outside edge, we're one foot one and a quarter. Okay and that's for the king studs. One foot, one and a quarter. Okay. Let's see what I with that. Let's delete this. One foot. Okay, that was the king stud. Let's see how high this was again. Three foot two and a quarter. Foot two and a quarter. Okay. So that's that. <coughs> Let's move this over. Okay, so we got to get, in order to get our 24 inch framed opening. Uh, we need to go beyond 24, make this a component first. I'm going to go beyond 24 by 3 inches, so 27 inches to move this over. Let's just delete this. Actually, we'll make that the other king's stud. that up. We'll just keep going with this. We'll find out. <coughs> okay, so we'll move this up. Let's actually move it out first. Push it down to zero. Whoops. You know what? I don't I don't like redrawing those. Like I don't know if there's a good way to do it, but when I have to like do something at a very specific height, if I go longer and then I have to push back, I have to do math to figure out how much I need to subtract from that to get to my desired number. Um, I could do a, uh, 
Yes, I could do like a a uh, a tape measure marking, like a guide point, but like I don't know, I just feel like it doesn't it takes longer, so I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna draw it. Oh, I just did something wrong. So about 1.5. Yeah, see, then that doesn't work. That's confusing. Alright, so there's 1.5. What the heck? Yep, see, the problem is, like, that happens sometimes. It's really frustrating. <clears throat> oh, it's because I didn't make this a component. Make that a component, and then I can draw 0.5 on the red axis. Okay, now I got my new face, and I'm going to go up 24 inches. Make that a component. Got this component already. I'll move this up 24 inches, or really 27 inches. Well, yeah, that's what it's only. It's only 26 and a or 25 and a half inches. Okay, two foot. So we're already two foot one and a half. <coughs> yeah, but that makes sense. Okay, so I gotta move these over. Okay. Get these over 1.5. They'll match up perfectly. Alright, so now I just got to duplicate this thing. Okay, so now I gotta figure out where my 16 on center is gonna be. Yeah, see, the, the positioning of this thing is kind of unfortunate. It's kind of effing up my 16 on center. Um, really, like, I need, I need my 16 on center. I need my, my, uh, I need my 16 on center board to basically start like right here and be like just kind of overlapping. So like I did over here, I'm just going to have to like put another piece right next to the jack stud just to close up, just to encompass the whole area and beyond of where 16 on center would be. Oops. Okay. So we'll just duplicate this right here. Okay, so that takes care of that. So let's see where 32 is. Uh, tape measure. 32 is right there. So I'm going to duplicate this thing again. Put that right there. And then there it is. 16 from here. That's weird. Yeah, something's off a little bit. Let's try this again. Let's see what happened. 32. 2 foot 8. So that's 32. So how did these get off? Oh, it's because I'm pulling from this side, which is incorrect. I need to be pulling from here. Okay, that makes sense. So we got 16, got 32, and then from here, we need to get our 1 foot 4, 16 inches. I'll delete this guide point. <coughs> just confusing the matter. Yeah, I think I was just off on the wrong side. Okay, so 16, 
so we'll pull this guy over. Put it right there. So now our tape should be 16. Okay. And now we're 16 here. And I think I might have messed that up. I don't even think I really need this. So from here to here is one foot three and three quarters. So our 16 on center falls somewhere in there, and then we got our n more narrow space just to the end of the wall there. So we're good. The only thing that we need to do <coughs> is continue our 16 on centers. We just need one. We just need one, and actually, this is wrong. This needs to rotate. Let me delete that. I like doing the headers on edge because they're stronger. Okay. Five. 3.5. Just do this on the X, on the red axis, and come down. And now we'll pull this out, and this is going to be 27, I think. Yes. Okay, make that a component. And we're going to rotate around, and we're going to pull this other part of the header here over to there. Okay. And now we need to carry this thing up. So what we can do to do that, we can just move this. This is going to be on the blue axis. And I should have grabbed the other side, but I didn't. So I can't see that. I'm just going to take a look at it here. And now I can move it on the blue axis to snap there. this guy. I don't know if this was the best way to do this, but well, it is what it is. Push. And now we'll unhide. Last. Oh! See, I messed that up. Component situation again. I'm going to make this unique. Then we're going to hide this. Then we're going to push this face back up here again. Oh, I think we can snap right there. Okay, and now we're going to unhide. Okay, yeah, here's a framing thing that I need to look into. Um, you can see in the, in the previous model, I put in uh, like little little studs. Put one here, 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 and well, here. I don't think this one was necessary. I think I messed that up. But, you know, I just felt like, you know, continuing the support up from the header was, was important, but I don't think it is because really, like, we got the two king studs on either side. These are kind of, like, redundant. Um, we really want the support down onto the header right there, so that's what we got. So I think I'm going to omit that and just leave it like this in this drawing. I think that'll be good. All right, framed opening number one complete. Let's uh, let's move over to framed opening number two. Okay, so I'll pull a measurement off of this side again. I have it off of the top plate this time. Yeah, off the top plate. And that is 10 foot 7 and a quarter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy this thing. Copy all of the, the pieces of this. 10 foot 7 and a quarter. Let's actually mark that. 
10 foot, 7 and 1 quarter. Okay, it's right there. It's right here. Okay, let's just delete this, delete this, delete this. Give ourselves, well, can't delete that. Oh wow, I hope this doesn't interfere. See, this is the kind of problems that we gotta watch out for. This framed opening might interfere. Oh wow, it's totally gonna interfere. Shoot. Okay, so let's see here, we got... Total of three foot six. From this point. Oh yeah, we're gonna be all up in here. We're gonna be all into this other wall section. Oh no, this was all one big wall section piece. So we're gonna be fine. Well, that was a good decision. We made this. We decided to make all the way from here all the way over to here one piece. So that's going to work out great. Alright. The only issue I don't like here is that our king stud is going to be kind of kind of messed up. Alright. Let me just push that down. Hide this. Push the king stood. Oh boy. Get that. Can't really make you unique. And we're going to push way down. Push even further down. And let's make this unique as well, because I know it's going to interfere with this one too. Oh. Unique. Okay, so now those are really far out of the way. I think I have enough room. Let me just take all these pieces. Okay, let's copy all that. Keep it on green axis, and we're going to snap. Oh, what happened? Okay, here we go. Just snaps that guide point. Perfect. Alright, so the only things we need to change here. Gotta change a few things. Okay, so let's hide this. Let's let's select this and push that to that intersection. Let's push this up to that same. Oh, this is a component. Okay, I have to make these unique. Probably should just redraw on this from the get go.
Alright, so now those are unique, and now I can... Now I can push these up. Uh, they're all unique together, maybe? Brother. Okay. Make you unique. Yep. Oh, brother. Okay. We got a component hell going on here. This is what I was this is what I didn't like. I'm gonna keep saying it again and again. I'm gonna try to work with it. Okay, and now this guy. Oh, somehow I messed that up. Okay, so pull that down now. What the heck just happened? Not sure at what point that happened, but it happened. Okay, oh, it's still messed up. What the heck just happened there? I'll just copy this one over. How did this get like this? No idea how that got messed up. Fix that. Yeah, see, we got a weird, weird thing happening here, and I think it's okay. Yeah, so this is like a weird... I don't really love that. Don't love it. Oh, it's not even done yet. This has to be three feet. Let's see here. That's a three by two, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so I have to move this stuff over by another 12 inches. Delete that. 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 And we're going to move this stuff over by 12 inches. And now we're going to pull.
Okay, so I just hid that other wall because it's getting really confusing to look at, uh, especially with this with the house over here in the background. I'm probably going to move that as well. And I can't hide it because I need to reference it, but can definitely move it over so I don't have to see it right behind this house. Okay, that's a lot easier to look at now. Yeah, see, look at this. This is that thing I was talking about. Somehow, these two pieces got, like, turned inside out. And if I go inside of them, it might be white. Wow, I'm so confused. Yeah, so I'm inside of it. And it looks like it's very white inside, whereas outside, it's like gray. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Uh, I will say that we should delete them. And then I should just copy the new ones I created from the other side over. Let's just copy them. What axis? Red. Snap. Okay, so those are still all the same component now, which is good. Save this thing before I forget. Okay, so let's take a look back over here at this framed opening. Um, yeah, so... It's, it's looking a little weird, but what we need to like, so the, the issue here um, with this framing is that we got, we have two headers kind of on top of each other in a short space. Um, we got this header that's got its jack stud and its king stud on this side, and its jack stud and its king stud on this side. This side, the king stud goes all the way up to the top plate, but on this side, this is where it gets weird. The king stud only goes up to the frame, the rough opening for the window. Um, so... It's not a big deal, because the load, I have to finish this framing, but the load coming down from the roof onto this wall over up top here, that's getting distributed down on this piece, there'll be another framing member right there, and then onto this header, which I should probably turn into 2x6s, honestly. Uh, there's no reason why the header, all the headers can't be 2x6s, because it's stronger. Um, and it's distributing that weight out to the jack studs, to the jack studs, which go down to this header, which then take that load out to this jack stud and this jack stud, and on this side, this jack stud takes a load straight down to the deck of the trailer. Um, so it looks a little bit weird. Uh, as far as our spacing, we got our 16 on center to here, no problem, and then we're going to have 16 right here. So we need to bring another one of these guys to right here. And then we have to do the same thing up above. Have to bring 16 over to there. So we'll copy one of these guys. Guide point. Uh, then we'll verify that we're still 16 over to this one, which we are not. Okay, so what happened there? Let's take a look. So we're 16 right there. We're 16 here. And then we're not 16. And then we're more than 16 by an inch and a quarter. That is weird. Oh, it's because of the positioning. It, it's again, it's where I had to position this window. It's just, it's just like in the midst of stuff. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh, let's first delete this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna select this and move this. Copy it. Stay on the green axis. 16. Okay. Let's do the same thing over here. Uh, we're gonna tape measure. Let's confirm. 16 to here is 16. 
and then 16 from here to here. That's not 16. It's 1 foot 2, so 16 would be right there. And we're going to move this guy. Oops. We can move it to the guide point. Okay, so now we got 16 to 16. 16 to... Man, that's really close to 16. How does it go over to here? 2 foot 8. So that's 30. That's 32. And then a true 16 would be like right in the middle of this stud. So we really want one just to the to the right of that. It seems like it almost like doesn't have to be there because I'm, I'm hitting 16 half on this stud. But you know what? What's the harm? There really is no harm in adding another one. So let's just add another stud right there. And now we've totally, we're, like, you can't miss it. 16 now will go from the middle of this stud to the middle of this stud, and then you will you will hit a stud no matter what on 16. So then we'll, tra we'll go from this point to here, and we got 16. And now we're good on 16, so we're going to go from this stud to right here and 16. Okay, so we're good again. Um, Yeah, and now from this one also, this stud up here will hit one foot four, 16 inches. It'll be fine right there. Okay, uh, so that's that framed opening. Let's delete those guide points. Okay. I'm just going to double check the measurements. This thing is three foot two and a quarter, and this thing is three foot two and a quarter. Let's double check over here. Three foot two and a quarter. Three foot two and a quarter. Coming from the end. This thing is one foot one and a quarter to. One foot one and a quarter to three foot seven and a quarter. Okay, good deal. And now measure it over here to this thing. Ten foot seven and a quarter. Let's see how we're looking over here. Ten foot seven and a quarter. Okay, and to the outside is 14, 1 and a quarter. Let's keep on the green axis. 14, 1 and a quarter. Perfect. Alright, so these two are good. Now we need to make the third one. So where is that? So now we're going to pull off this side. And this one. Three foot two. How big is this framed opening? Three foot two and this is four by three. Okay, so three foot two. Four by three. So we're, we'll pull we'll pull off a, a line on this uh, on this tape measure to three foot two on the green axis. I'll lock the green axis in, and then I'm going to say three foot two inches. 
Okay, so that's where we begin. So let's just grab this guy and move it over. Perfect. Hold down shift to constrain to the uh, to the axis that I started pulling it on, the green axis. I could also use the uh, the left arrow to do that. Okay, click to lock that in. Okay, so this this window is three foot wide. So I'm gonna have this. Oh my gosh! Now I got a problem. Now I got a problem. Is this thing? Had an extra framing over there. <sighs> so now I have a problem because I have a separate wall here and I have a window that spans the two walls. So I think this means that I'm going to have to make this gigantor wall right now. I don't really have much of a say here. I'm going to have to do it. This wall is going to be. This wall is going to be 20 feet long. Not psyched about that. Not psyched. But I don't think I have a choice. With where the windows are going to be and where that header is, I think it just needs to be this big monolithic wall. Unfortunately. But hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Okay, so let's do that first. this and let's pull this okay I have an extra frame member there that I don't need delete this thing did something weird with the that top plate not sure what it was doesn't really matter now, so whatever. Okay, so now it's a big old wall. And I'm going to pause. Yeah, 16 and a half inches. <coughs> oh, I don't have any of that stuff. So I'll just take this stuff from over here. Okay, so I have so I have uh, these components that I copied over from another area, from another uh, framed opening <clears throat> on the uh, on this side of the camper or the trailer. 
or <laughs> the tiny house. Uh, get those confused a lot. Um, so what we got to do here is we got to make the three of these unique. We're going to select them all, hold down control, and uh, we're going to make them unique. And what that's going to do is now, when we push them down, which we need to do, let's see here. Oops. When I push one of these down, all three of these will go down, right? But the ones that we copied them from over here will stay. So by selecting all three of the same component and making the, 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 the selection of the three unique, they stay unique to each other and separate themselves from the previous components over here. So now let's just double check to see how high this was again. This was 16 and a half inches. Okay, so now since I, I'm not starting a new piece, let me delete the guidelines first. Okay, I'm going to take this up from this line and I'm going to go 16.5. Alright, so now I know how high that needs to go and I can just pull these up to the intersection there. Online, outside, active. Perfect. Okay, so now I got those three. So that handles that part of this. Now I need to go back and get the dimension off of here to see how far over this was. So we got three foot two from the outside framing member on the end of that wall. So. Let's see what that where that gets us. Let me get rid of that guide. Edit. Delete guides. Okay, three foot two inches. Okay. So that window is way over there. So let's uh, let's delete these guys. I think we have to. Yeah, we're gonna have to delete this too. Probably gonna have to delete that as well. So three foot two. Okay, so let's do a right drag select so we can get, even if we're not fully encompassing all the pieces, it still selects them, and then we can select the ones that it didn't get. Let's unselect that guideline. I gotta hold down shift to do that. <coughs> let's make sure that it got, yep, got that piece too. So let's move. Let's move this and we're going to snap to the green axis and line up right there. Okay, great. Now, oh uh, wow, we got a problem. We got a problem. So the idea, <laughs> the idea is that this window is supposed to be down here, this rough opening, but we and it's supposed to be three feet wide. So the actual rough opening is going to start right here to three feet. Where are we? Oh. Yeah, we're not three foot and eleven sixteenths, so we are super close to that. I think we could just move this over just a little bit and we can fit it. Just a little bit. So let's, let's see if this one's going to work. Let's take these two. Like this, this, and this. Let's move them over. We're gonna share a king stud if we do it this way. So we got this. <clears throat> Let's just do it. Let's see if it works. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay. Now let's delete this guide. Let's make a new guide. From here. This is going to be three foot. Three foot. Let's actually make that like a line. Three foot. Okay. <clears throat> Where'd that go? Three foot. Okay, so there it is. So we basically, we need to move that over. Okay. 
So this needs to move over to here. To the guide point. <clears throat> okay, so it changes a little bit. Just delete the guides. Alright, let's fill in the blanks and see what we get. Gotta select on the right point on the right object to rotate around, or else so you select infinity and you go all over the place. Okay, so let's get. We gotta draw a new guy right here. <coughs> okay, line. 1.5 up over on the red. Oh, that's not it. Let's try this again. Point. Oh, let me undo a few things here. Okay, line. One point five on the red axis. Back down again. Select this. Pull it out to right there. Okay, that's the bottom plate of this rough opening. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see what we got here now. We got pull up four foot on the blue axis, four foot. That's way up there. So let's let's get rid of you. Let's go this way. Let's move this up. Lock to the blue axis. Oh, oops. I selected guideline by accident. Shift click that thing to deselect it and we're going to go up. Oops. Lock to blue axis and constrained on the line intersect line. That's perfect. Okay. <coughs> Let's move this up and lock it to the blue axis. Boom. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Select this. Lock it to the blue axis, and right there. Okay, now we're just going to drag these down. For some reason, the, oh, there we go. Good, and they're components, so that saved a little bit of time. Okay, so here's what we got going on. Let's make sure that we... Let's delete this guideline. Alright, let's see how much... So we should be three feet wide on the rough opening. Yep. And we should be four feet high. Yep. Alright, so our rough opening is good. Before I add any more frame members, I want to <coughs> explain a couple things here. I don't see a problem with this. Um, this header in cripple stud, or jack stud rather, and uh, in this header and um, jack stud going all the way down are sharing the same king stud, but I don't see that as a problem. Uh, the only issue that we've done here is that, so this, this plate underneath the window rough opening uh, we wanted it to be 16 and a half inches uh, up off the off the sole plate, but in order to do that, you can see right here that we have a conflict. If we were to push it over any further, we would be hitting this this king stud and, and hitting this header, and we have a conflict there. So we weren't able to push this over uh, three foot two from the end. So all we got to the uh, to this king stud was two foot eleven and a half. So we were two and a half inches further over to the end wall, the end of this wall than we originally wanted. Uh, like we over here we were three foot two. So two and a half inches closer. Um, if I open up our I take a look at our drawings or sketches and take a look at what's over there. Um, 
This is not the door wall. This is this wall. Okay. So over there, so we basically have a, a cabinet over here. Basically have a cabinet. So our wall is actually going to start three and a half inches plus three quarters in. So we got, this wall is, is two by four studs, three and a half inches for that, plus three quarters of an inch for the interior uh, paneling. So we got uh, four and a quarter inches plus two feet. So it's 28 and a quarter inches. 28 and one quarter. So that brings us to right here. Right? So we got cabinetry that's going to come out to there. So even with that, we still have 10 and a quarter inches before we hit the window. So that, that should be fine. Um, and if anything, the dishwasher was going to go over here. So if anything, we have actually moved farther away from that. So that's not going to be a problem. So I'm not seeing that it is an issue at all. We can we can rock that right on. Okay, so let's just wrap up these uh, let's delete these guides. Let's wrap up the framing members over here so <clears throat> let's get the tape measure out okay so we got one foot four we got 16 inches there so we need six we don't we're missing one over here so let's constrain that to the lock that to the green axis 16 inches over boom okay <coughs> let's do a tape measure Let's actually, I like doing this line better. 16 inches, okay. So since we can't copy this guy over, I have to make a mark and then grab this guy and then copy him over. Okay, I'll do the same thing again. Now I can just use this. 16 inches. And then 16 inches from here. Oops. Sixteen inches from here is actually all up in there. So let's take the tape measure. Let's do this. Yeah, let's just take the tape measure and go up. Like so, lock it to the blue axis and make a mark up here. And now I can take I can take this guy right here and copy that. Lock it to the green. Put it right there. Now we should have 16 inches from here to here, which we do. Why is that about 16 inches? Something's up. Got to watch out for that. Something's wrong. What happened here? 16 inches from this guide point to here? Yes. Yes, there is. So how is this not 16 inches? All right, let's, uh, this is about 16, which means it's like less than a 64th off. Let's figure out what happened. Let's start from the beginning. 16 inches. 16 inches. 16 inches. Let's delete this line to be absolutely sure that we're not getting confused with that. 16 inches. 16 inches. Let's delete this line. Huh, alright, so we just gotta move this over. It's as simple as that. Let's get that. Just moved over a little bit first. 
Now let's take this. And just do our 16 inches. lock it to the green, bring it down to this point. Okay. Let's bring a guideline down to here. Delete this line. And now let's see what we're looking at from here here. So one foot four from there to there. Got that. Let's see if we get 16 inches from here to here. Yeah, okay. So that one stud was off a little bit. We get 32. Yep. 48. Yep. And do we get 64? Yep. Okay, so we're good. Delete guides. And we just need to transfer these guys up here. So we just need to draw <coughs> little guy right here. Let's get this on the uh, on the red axis. Now 1.5. Now on the red axis again. up to there. 18 entities selected. That's how we know if we can't see the other sides that all of them are selected so we can make a component out of all those faces, all those entities. Alright, now we got this stud lined up with this little stud, little cripple stud. And now we can make a copy of this guy. Constrain it to the green. 16 inches and we now know that these two match up. We can confirm that just by pulling the guideline off of here and seeing that we got line up there and we got line up there. And if we want to make absolutely sure we can take tape measure and pull a measurement from there to there and we got one foot four 16 inches. We are good to go. And the last little detail I want to do here is make all these, let's see here, I want to make all these headers 2x6s instead of 2x4s. So I'll hide that, and we're going to need an inch and three quarters to do that, 1.75, push that up, <clears throat> and and push this up inch and three quarters. Alright, now we should just be able to unhide. And that since there it's a component, it just did its thing. Sweet. Alright, same thing for these. Hide. See, now we're starting to see some benefits <clears throat> from the components. All that, all that annoyance is starting to save us a little bit of time here when we are starting to edit to one. Oops. See, I, I went up a little bit and let go, uh, and I usually undo that because what I want to do is click on this and then just type 1.75. If I go up a little bit and then push it just a little bit, then I have no idea where I'm at, and I can't. I don't know what the dimension is to pull it up at that point. So I just undo it and start over again. 
Okay, so there is just triple confirmed these are five and a quarter, and they are. Okay, and let's do that one more time. Again, these are components, so these should go up together. Seven five. And unhide blast. Boom. Okay, I think this wall's looking pretty ready to sheath. Now that this wall is done, I need to group the two walls together, uh, the two wall components. So uh, let's do a, oh, what do you call this? A right to left click selection and we'll get all of that stuff we'll select a few things that, that didn't get looks like there's only one thing it didn't get okay so I'm gonna group this together Make group. the reason I'm not making this a component is because this is a wall section that's very unique I'm never gonna I'm never gonna need to duplicate this and modify it with something like along with another version of it um, and uh, so that being said you know I just need to make a logical grouping of all of the components that it contains so that's why I'm creating a group uh, makes sense to me um, I don't know if it's the preferred way to go about things but who knows all right so same dealy here I'm gonna make a right to left selection of the majority of this wall then I'm gonna select the rem oh I got a problem here I oh, know I don't this is all part of one giant wall okay let me make that selection a little bigger this is all the giant wall okay so let me go select now a few things that didn't get get this no, okay. Okay, I think I got it. So I'm going to make a grouping of this. So now, I got, when I click on this first, I get just a group of the entire thing. I want to edit the, something in the group, like the way it was before the group was made. Just like with a component, I can double click on it and now I can access all the components inside of that group individually. And then if I want to go in and, and access all the faces in that component, I can just double click that and now I can access the various the various faces and entities inside of each of these two by four components. Okay, so now those are grouped. I'm going to refrain probably from assigning these to layers for a while. Um, not going to deal with that. I'm probably going to redo all these layers because these are all for the old tiny house. Uh, so now that's done. Uh, I want to test the sheathing out. I think it's a little bit early to do sheathing, but I need to make sure that I don't have the problem I had before. So this would be a good time to show you the problem I had before. Okay, so you don't make the same mistake, because this is a very, very time-consuming mistake. Let me see if I can find an example of it. I think I had some examples up here. Okay, so these, I think, look okay. Might have been on the other side. Let's check that out. Very hard to see these things. It's very frustrating. Okay. Let's see. Do I have some here? Nope. Let's see if I can find them. If 
feel like I remember seeing them on the top edge. Like up here. Whoops, don't want to go inside the 2x4. Top plate, let's stay out of there. Huh. Let's try down here. all seems to be lining up. So hard to find. Lodi. Okay. I swear, guys. I swear they're here. I swear I'm just not redrawing this thing for nothing. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Where are these things? Da -da -da -da. Come on. Show me. Show me where you are. Wow, it's like there's no problems. It's almost like there's no problems. It's kind of hilarious. see something. Okay, here we go. Here's a perfect example. So hard to find. Okay, so what, what, what happened here is that this, what is this even? First of all, let's take a, let's just give you an idea of, of the scale that we're talking about here. Let's take a look at what, how big this is. Approximately zero inches. You know what that means? Let's see how far we have to go out before we get Okay, so this right here, that's one eighth of an inch. So this is like this little thing that we're looking at right here. That is like one five hundredth of an inch, something crazy like that. But the problem was that something, that something about the way I was snapping once in a while was creating those imperfections. Now, see, the problem is, is that it's pr it's proud there, right? But if we scroll, if we like go down. To the other end of that, the other end of that two by four, down here. Okay, so it's actually proud down here too. It's actually proud down here too. But we, ha I had situations, so that would be fine. So this one, I can literally just push in like this. I'm just gonna push that in. Fixed. But the problem is, I had ones that we're proud on the bottom but even on the top and what that means is basically all of like something is all messed up like the root it was if it was even up here but proud down there then the roofing members were too long I mean it was it gets cascaded with all kinds of problems now the issue is is that when you put a sheet of plywood over this wall and then you want to cut out this uh, this shape from that plywood you can't do it because it's not making contact with all of the pieces evenly um, I'm gonna leave it at that um, I think that's a like a, a high enough level explanation that makes sense um, but SketchUp like it's just a nightmare and you know what I don't even know I don't want to try to finagle things and make it work and then like later on have other issues so I just opted to redraw the entire thing um, it was actually by the suggestion of a really helpful guy. It was by Dave R. on uh, one of these SketchUp forums. <clears throat> Super nice guy, really helped me out, did a phone conference with me. I just posted on a forum. Actually, let me bring that up. Okay, so moving on, let's try to put 
piece of sheathing on. Now, you know, how the orientation of the sheathing that you put on, I don't really know what the best thing is, but uh, um, our 16 on center is going to make it possible to do this. I know that. So uh, this side, this little space right here isn't 16 on center, so let's just start over here. Um, sh uh, sheets of plywood are f uh, 4 foot by 8 foot, so let's see what we're working with here height wise. We want to take this sheathing you know, it's interesting, we probably want to take the sheathing all the way down down to the bottom of the trailer no, 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 I don't think so yeah, let's just take it down to here for now Okay, so what do we got? Six foot, four and a half. Um, yeah, what would be the best thing to do? Should I go horizontal or should I go vertical? That is a tough call. Um, I'm going to say probably, I did horizontal over here, and I think horizontal ended up making more sense. Um, especially with this little, little jutting out thing because the total height on this side total height on what's going on here total height on this side is like just over just almost 11 feet and then on this side it's 6 inches higher so it's like 11.6 on this side so if we did 4 foot sections that would actually work out really well into 3 three rows of plywood <clears throat> whereas if I did vertical that would be two eight footers and there'd be like a lot of small pieces so yeah I think uh, horizontal is going to be the way to go uh, let's give this a try okay so let's start with horizontal okay four by eight sheet of plywood Let's just draw that. Eh, I guess I could do the rectangle. I want red. I want red to be my, my plane here. Okay, so the first dimension, as I can see, is going to be 8 feet, and the second one is 4 feet. So 8 foot, 4 foot. Okay, there is my sheet. Yeah. So how can we do this? So there is a neat little a neat little tool here. Let's first uh I think we should pull this first. So let's pull this out three quarters of an inch. What the heck is this? How the heck did that happen? See, already there's something going on here. It's hard to say. Why is that an intersecting line? Is that sticking out proud? What is going on with that? do not think it is. How is that freaking possible? <clears throat> okay, maybe we should just do it over here. So, make a rectangle, red axis, four feet, comma, eight feet. Oops, other way around. Rectangle, red axis, Okay, rectangle, red axis. Okay, how about eight feet? Come to four feet. 
and now we'll select this face, we'll pull it 0.75. Okay, so the only thing that we need to change about this <clears throat> is if we want to land, if we want to have an eighth inch gap, we need to push this in an eighth of an inch, or rather a sixteenth of an inch, but instead of doing that, we could also undo this rectangle, constrain to the red axis. We could do uh, we could do seven foot eleven and fifteen sixteenths, comma. Four feet. All right. So now we've taken care of that. We don't have to pull it later. Okay. 0.75. Okay. Let's make this a component and let's place it. little issue right here. So let's do this. I think we can just so there's a couple things you can do. You can subtract this from this by selecting the fender first and then control clicking the, uh, the sheet of plywood and then we can use the trim tool. But the problem is there this is not allowing me to do this right now and I think the reason is is because there's something about this fender that won't let me do it so what if we do this what if we draw some lines on the plywood alright let's do that we can draw some lines basically just trace this fender. Right onto the front shift face of the plywood. Okay, so now we've drawn these lines. And now what I think we can do is we can actually push. We can push the plywood three quarters of an inch in and make it disappear. Boom. Nailed it. Cool. Alright, so that's how you do that. Right around that fender. Okay. <coughs> Now, let's take a look here. What the heck is going on? Why are we not landed right on that 2x4? We made sure we were 16 on center. Okay, so we did something wrong. Let's first save this before we go any further. Sixteen. 16. Oh, this is the age-old issue. The fact that we're starting on an end. And we're going to be... We're going to be a little bit... We're going to be a little bit... Uh, Yeah, we're going to be approximately three quarters of an inch shy, minus that sixteenth. So let's see where we go here. To our midpoint. Do we get a midpoint here? Not really. 
but yeah, here's our here's our three quarters basically. So that's the answer because we're sitting we're sitting right on that. We're not meeting halfway on that on that piece of two by over there. So what we need to do. Let's see what happens if we try to push this back to the previous sheet. Yeah, that doesn't work out too good. Yeah, we can make it work. No, this is not going to work. Okay, let's undo a couple things. We know how to do that now. So that's good. Get rid of those lines. Okay, so those lines are gone. We got our sheet of plywood back. And I'm going to push this back 16 inches. Okay. And now I'm going to add three quarters. Because adding three quarters is what I lost by sitting on the full piece of two by on the other side. Okay. Okay, so that should be good. Now let me copy this sheet of plywood. Okay. Well, no, I want a full sheet of plywood now, so <clears throat> I'm going to have to draw another one. Yeah, because this is a component. I should have saved that plywood component as a full thing before, but whatever. Okay, so let's constrain to the red axis, hitting the right arrow, and now we're going to be... Uh, this is not this is not going to be eight feet. This is going to be seven foot eleven and fifteen sixteenths, comma four feet. Okay, and now we'll pull seven five. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Got eighteen entities, so I'm making sure that I got everything. I'm going to call this 4x8 plywood. My first named component. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now let's move this in. That ain't going to work. Let's move this. this to right here. Okay, and now we can move it over on the green axis by one eighth. Okay, how are we looking? Looking really good. So that is that. And what we should just do now, you see now? You see how we're meeting up perfectly right on the middle of this uh, of this 16 on center stud. That's what this is all about. So now let me copy this again. Constrain it to the green and I'm going to move it by 8 feet. And I should be sitting right on the middle of another stud now. Which I am. Excellent. Okay, so now do the same deal. Move this guy, copy him, constrain it to the green, eight feet. All right, so there's some plywood. Um, yeah, so let's do this. Let's uh, let's copy that again, and uh, we're gonna have some stagger now because I got this one sheet going all the way to there. The next row we'll have some stagger. Probably gonna have to delete some of this plywood because I'm gonna wanna optimize how I'm doing this. Hey, you know what? We gotta go an approximately another two feet out after that, so why don't we just do four feet? 
Yeah, let's do that. Let's do four feet from the end. We can probably continue to use this. So, tape measure. Let's do it this. Four feet. Let's copy. Actually, put this one right here for a moment. Let's move this. This guy over here for a second. Constrain him to the other axis. Okay, so now I can grab it. Oh, right. Let me orbit around a little bit. Okay, so I need to move this point and get this point. Okay, what is going on here? Why can't I hit? Where is this guy? How'd this guy get all the way back here? Oh yeah, the guy's right here. Okay, so I'm, that's weird. Okay, constrain it to the green. Bring it to the intersect line. Okay. All right, so that's four feet. Is it on halfway? Something's up. I just need it to be on halfway. So what's going on with this? This should be... Oh, right, again, I'm at the end. Right, so it needs to be four foot and three quarters. <laughs> Four foot three quarters minus a sixteenth. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So I'm gonna make this mark. I'm gonna hide this. Get rid of this. So, you know, I'll just take from the midpoint here. If I take from the midpoint, if I take from the midpoint, it'll be easy. I can just do four foot minus, so it'll be three foot. 11 and 15 sixteenth inches. Wait a minute. What? Where'd that go? That didn't work. Oh, because it wants to do that. Alright, this is a midpoint issue. Okay. Yeah, it wants to take from that line. Huh. Alright, so whatever. So we'll do four foot and three quarters because that's how much I'm losing by going further all the way to the end of this piece of two by four. So we'll just say from here we'll go on the green axis, lock into the green axis, we'll do four foot <coughs> And one sixteenth under three quarters, which is eleven sixteenths. Okay, so that is right there. I'm just going to make another thing just to make that clear. Okay, so now I'm going to unhide. And I'm just going to come on the inside of this wall. 
and I'm going to move this to here. And that should be, it's probably an easier way to have done that. I probably could have like somehow gone to the midpoint of this thing. It should be the midpoint of this. One and a sixteenth? No, thirteen sixteenths. So plus one, be twelve sixteenths, three quarters, yeah. Yeah. So that's right in the middle, minus a sixteenth. That was probably, was probably a crappy way to do that. In any case, uh, let's see here. Edit this, I'm going to add a line from here, the blue axis up to here. And I'm going to get rid of this by pushing this three quarters. That's just how we're going to rock with this for now. I can always pull that back later. But that'll be fine. Oh, what the heck? Oh, component. I always forgot. Make unique. Make unique. Okay, let's try that again. So now I'm just going to straight up copy this component. I'm actually going to copy it off the bottom corner. I can even see that. Which I can't. I'll just then take this and I will then re grab it from that corner. And now I will move it. One eighth. Okay. All right. So I'll get to drawing this thing and cutting that out later. But for right now, what I need to make sure is that I can. Ah. What I need to make sure of right now is that I can cut out this framed opening. That's the big clincher. That's the big Bahama Mama right there. Okay. Delete guides. Alright, here we go, guys. Ah. Let's see if it works. It's three pieces. I'm not even sure how this is. Oh, I'm going to have to probably just push three of them. Alright, so the idea here is that I'm creating lines. Probably have to do. lines should be getting created on the plywood and I should be able to push them out but it doesn't seem to be working Didn't that work? All right, let's try that again. Line. Let's just try doing it like for real. I'm gonna do it like over the entire thing. Okay. So I have these now. I got this big thing. Right, but that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to draw the lines on that. Try this bottom piece. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I have to select. I have to select the uh, this piece first. So let me draw the lines now. 
Now I'm drawing the lines on that, the face of that piece of plywood. Okay, I have that cut out. I'll select just that face. Ah, there it is. So beautiful. Okay, so I gotta do it individually for all of these. Okay. Okay, let's undo that. I already have lines on the edges, so... Let's rock this. This should be enough. Yep, it's enough. Now I can select just that. I can push that. Oops. Gone. Sweet. <clears throat> and now... I can do the same with this one. So I already got lines on the edges, so I just got to draw like from here. To here. And then down to here. And now I can push this. Look at that. Flippin' beautiful. And there it is. That's how you punch a window out of the sheetrock. Wait a minute, what happened to this one down here? Oh, it's a component. I did it to all of them. Wait, what is this thing? Oh, that's part of the header. Alright, well, I can undo that. But the point is, that's the key. And I want to just you know mention here... You might say, oh, why don't you just draw a plywood around that? Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's not that easy. Doing a plywood layout, you know, it takes some thought, and you got to lay it out well so you don't waste material. And if you have to, like, draw around your framed openings and try to, like, manipulate plywood like that, it, it just, I'm telling you, I tried. It's, it's way more difficult than just being able to put sheets of plywood up on your wall and then just cut your windows out. And that's how you're going to be doing it anyway, most likely. Um, it's an easier way to do it when you're... Uh, building the actual house just put them up drill holes in the corners and then just use a uh, I mean shoot a circular saw or, or or a jigsaw to cut out the the windows out of the plywood so there you go now that I know that's working I'm confirming that my all my 2x4 frame members are flush against each other and this works uh, that solves the problem I had with this bad boy over here and uh, I'm well on my way to redrawing that thing all right right on well let me just uh, wrap this up wrap this wall up and I'm gonna continue on doing the framed openings on the wall behind <laughs>